Hi, this is Dror Mshakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. We're trying to do the best we can in a dark time, in a dark world, in a dark generation. A few moments before dawn, you need to find your way to the holy zone, to the zone of Kedusha. Totally blind, scared. Afraid, <coughs> shaky, not stirred, and the Creator is taking you in a journey that is uh, <coughs> beyond your ability to, to grasp, to understand at all what's going on, to try even to understand What's the plan? What's going to be? You can't see one inch in front of your nose. You cannot tell. You don't know how you're going to wake up tomorrow morning. You don't know if you're going to wake up tomorrow morning. You don't have a clue what's going on. You don't know behind your head, behind your back, behind your thoughts, inside your mind. You don't have a clue what's going on in this world and why the Creator is bringing us to such like crazy challenge and with all the respect to Him, can't you see that we're so weak? Like, aren't you able to see that we are so exhausted after thousands of years of exile, being chased for our Judaism and and as children been rebuked and destroyed and humiliated and don't know who we are and finding it so hard to recognize our true selves and don't understand am I a, a Jew or not a Jew, am I Hasid or am I Litvish, am I Baal Tshuva or from, from birth and who am I, am I supposed to, not supposed to, should I, shouldn't I? In every intersection you find yourself like lost with no, no reception, no connection, no understanding, no clue where to turn, what to do. The ways can't see you. No one can recognize your route. You're all alone in darkness and you need to find a way. And the map is not clear. You go and you ask people, you go to the wise and you consult with righteous people and everyone are guiding you, yeah, now you need to take a right and someone else tells you, no, you need to go to the left and you say, okay, I hear the contradiction, so bottom line, what should I do? You should continue and find your own way. Again and again the Creator is throwing us to such deep water and we're screaming, I'm not a swimmer, I don't know how to dive, I like maximum um, dumpster diving so we can, we, we can make in our lives. Maximum to the dumpsters we know how to jump. Don't have a clue, so the question is like why? How can it be that the Creator, <coughs> what can't He see the large picture, the big picture of our life, that we're so weak and so broken? The answer is that we are so close to the to the, to the, to the to the final line, to the ending, to the salvation, that that's why the Creator is counting on <coughs> us to complete and to accomplish our mission in this messed up world. Because in reality we are on the edge, on the end, on the border of end of the exile of more than 2,000 years of darkness. And our future and our reality is about to change in such a beautiful and magnificent way that will fix and will heal all of our scars and all of our wounds and all of our craziness and all of our pain and sorrow and feelings of loss and confusions. 
But for that we must complete the next step. And there is only one more step. And that step is simple, even for people like us. Hashem is showing to us, the Creator of the world is showing to each and every one of us that we don't have no one to turn to, to call, no one to count on, no one, no one to lean on, and even on ourselves. The only thing that we should do with all of our power is to try is to try to connect ourselves to what that seems to our eyes as the right path, as the truth. Because the light will not be supplied unless you will conquer your destinies. You yourself will achieve your goals. We will see a different kind of salvation in our days. A salvation for those ones that will be worthy for it, those ones that will have the Mary to be redeemed. Now I'm not talking about those big shots, about the righteous ones, about the divine ones, because if I'm going to tell you stories, what happens in the hidden rooms of those righteous ones, you will say for sure, loud and clear, if those are the faces of the <coughs> righteous ones in our generation, I don't want to be righteous, I don't want to be part. I want to be who I am, I want to take care of my issues, I want to work in my house, I want to take care of my family, I think I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay with my people, in my country, in my land, I will see what Hashem wants from me. Because today the darkness is so thick, and like the Creator said, I will not going to bring a flood again on earth, but Rabbi Nachman of Westlev said on it, not a flood of water, but flood of negative thoughts against the Creator, flood of, of, of heretic, of, of lack of faith, He will bring. And not a regular flood, just a flood that will cover even the highest mountains. And Rabbi Nachman of Wesel said, the highest mountains are the greatest righteous people of the last generation. Even they will be covered with lack of faith. Even they will chase after money. Even they are going to chase after honor. Even they are going to chase after women, after pleasure, after satisfaction. Even those ones that will seem to us as the greatest ones of our generation, even they will be covered <coughs> with the water of that spiritual flood of darkness. But who will survive? Who will be that one that will find himself in that Noah Ark? Rabbi Nachman of Westlev is explaining and saying, those will be those ones that will attach themselves to the Midah of Truth. Those are going to be the truthful ones. Those ones <coughs> that will have, that will find the ability to be honest, to be sincere, to be loyal, to be right, to be as good as they can, to have that very strong courage, to be brave and brazen, to admit the horrible truth, the painful truth, to have the ability to say, I was wrong and now I'm sorry, and to do tshuva, and to come back and to climb back to that holy mountain of Hashem and to start the journey like we haven't started it ever before and to walk in our baby steps and to carry all of our cargoes and all of our scars and all of the pain and all of the weight and all the sorrow and to walk with it and to work with it and not to surrender and not to give up. Because no one in this generation can redeem you except of you yourself, can redeem yourself from your fears, from your depression, from your anxieties. <coughs> and the solution for that and the only way to achieve that is to confront your fears. It's to stand in front of reality and to connect yourself to the truth of your life reality. 
Not to try to climb to those high levels of the Mikubalim and start thinking, oh, I'm going to learn Kabbalah. Or to those ones that are waking early in the morning and to say, oh no, if I'm going to dive in nets, I'm going to pray in sunrise, that's going to save me. I'm sorry to disappoint you. The nets won't save you. The Kabbalah won't save you. The Mikveh won't save you. Eight hours of Gemara or Zohar Kadosh with Midrashim, with Rashi and Tosfot on all Gemara, Shulchan Aruch, won't redeem you, won't save you. Why? Because the test is an inner test. And even if you are learning, and if, even if you are connecting yourself through the wonderful and amazing mitzvot while learning and while trying to go to the mikveh and trying to catch a minyan and trying to pray and trying to do the best that you can in any possible way, still, no matter how much you're going to do, no matter how much effort you're going to put on serving the Creator, you're going to still have to face your inner fears in front of the mirror. The fact that you hate yourself, the fact that you disrespect yourself, the fact that you want to revenge yourself, that you hate yourself, that you cannot stand the way you look, that you cannot stand the way you sound, that you cannot hear yourself that you're afraid to deal with your beloved ones, that you're afraid to go out to the street, that you're afraid to see who you are, that you're afraid to stare in your own eyes. You need to deal with those tiny, tiny things that are making you so crazy. And eight hours of learning in the yeshiva, in the Beit Midrash, won't save you from your deep issues that are destroying your relationship. Eight hours under the water in the mikveh won't save you from the fact that you see the face of your father in your child. It's a problem that you need to face. It's an issue that you need to deal with. The fact that you're scared of people, of opinions of people, of criticism, of whatever you're scared of in life, those are not problems that will be solved by waking up in the morning and finding yourself in the holiest or largest or biggest minyan in the world. Even if you're going to pray in Uman in the same 5,000 people minyan all year long, it won't save you from your pressure from your parents. And the Creator, He wants you to deal with your inner issues with your emotional patterns that are keep on failing you in the tests of life. That you keep on pretending to be someone that you are not. And that you're not being honest because you're scared. And that you're too afraid to deal with your emotional problems. And that's why you're not able to say the truth and to be honest and to build normal and healthy relationships and to educate your children on the path of Kedusha, and to treat yourself with dignity and with pride. And you're always in, on the run. You're always scared of opinions, and you're always lost, and you're always in anxieties and terrified what will happen and what will be. And we all saw thousands and thousands of miracles, and we're still trying to bring someone else to save us. We're still waiting for some Redeemer to come, for a hidden righteous man that's going to come from the darkness, that's going to land from the clouds. This is not the real desire of the Creator. The Creator, He wants us to become worthy. The Creator, He wants us to be those servants, those noble warriors that are fighting the wars of Hashem. The wars of Hashem are the wars with our emotional body. It's to deal with our lackings. If you would know what the real righteous people went through in their lifetimes, if we would go into the depths of the biblical stories, what happened with Nachshon, what happened with Moses, what really happened with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob, with Sarah, with Rachel, with Leah, with Esther the queen, can we understand the huge battles, the gigantic wars, the emotional stress and pressure that they went through to bring down those salvations? They were all lonely. 
They were all destroyed. They were all humiliated. They were all ashamed. They were all rebuked. They were all been exiled. They were all suffering from poverty and from diseases and sicknesses. They all been cursed by their communities. They all been chased by everyone they loved. They found themselves facing their own fears and they've been rebuked on their fears. And the Creator put them in front of the mirror and <coughs> until that moment that they faced reality and deal with the truth, they, they, they couldn't be saved. Until that moment that they were ready to admit the truth, the awful truth, the horrible truth, that truth that you're afraid to admit, that you're afraid to deal with, that you're afraid to say, I'm a coward. I am. I am a coward. I am. I am. I am. And I'm saying that myself right now in front of you. I am. You can think, oh no, he's so brave. Brave? I am brave to admit that I'm a coward. That is my courage. That I'm able to tell you that I am a coward, that I'm afraid to deal with the horrible truth of my life. That I feel that I destroyed my life. That I feel that I was not respecting my wife like I was supposed to. That I haven't raised my children like I wanted to. That I don't have enough confidence and, 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 and faith in Hashem. And that I'm rebuking myself and that I have issues from earlier age ages and from my childhood and from the divorce of my parents I will be brave only to tell you what that I'm telling myself if I will walk all the way in that path to find the truth about myself <coughs> about who am I who the Creator made me to be and he sent me on a mission and in that mission I found myself lost so many times and in that darkness of the mission, of the path of my life, I failed and I messed up thousands of times. And if I won't take the responsibility, I will be always a liar <coughs> and a coward. And I will never going to be someone that the Creator can trust. Because all those challenges that we are going through in life, that the Creator is facing us with our weaknesses, that He is helping us to stand and to be rebuked over and over again and again to see our deepest fears, to confront our deepest anxieties, even things from different and earlier lifetimes, is only for one cause that we will break those patterns and will deal with our lives with courage, that we will believe that the Creator is with us, even if we are weak, that we're going to pass that test of understanding that the Creator, He loves each and every one of us, an unconditional love. <coughs> Love that does not depend in the hours that you wake up before dawn. That does not depend in how many times you've been to the mikveh this week or this month. Does not depend in how many pages of Gemara or Zohar Kadosh with all the Mepharshim, Baal Sulam or Perush Matok Midvash and all the explanations. Without all of that, the Creator loves you. A love of a holy parent to his child. Of a Creator that does not have anything else in his life except of his children. And when we will grab that, then we will be one with Hashem. Because as long as you think that the Creator expects you to be someone that you're not, and you think that He is waiting, and that He is not accepting your <coughs> prayers, and that He is judging you and criticizing you, so I'm asking you, are you crazy to serve someone so angry? Are you crazy to follow such a cruel leader? Like, what are you doing? If that's your belief, if for you, the Creator, God, Hashem, Elohim, He's someone that is about to punish you, He's someone that is judging you on every mistake. So, are, like, are you cooperating with that? Like, are you crazy? Don't do that. Don't follow your fears to serve them. 
Only when we will come to that recognition, to that understanding, to that clarification that the Creator is Father of mercy. The meaning of the word mercy means that He loves everyone. That He loves even those ones that are not worthy, even those ones that are broken, and especially those ones like that He's revealing and telling us that He will be with us even in the most contaminated places, with the widows and with the orphans and with the poor, with those broken ones, with those lonely ones, with those depressed ones, by those ones that have been destroyed and demolished by the system, by the governments and by society. With those ones, with the humble ones, the Creator spends His time. With those holy ones, that kept the truth within even when they've been destroyed and humiliated. That they never betrayed the truth. And we are one of those. We can become one of those if we will decide to deal with our fears and not to surrender to our fears. And not to let this world overpower us and break our spirits. And for that you don't need to be righteous and you don't need to be a genius. For sure you don't need to be rich, you don't need to be married and you don't need to have children and you don't need to own a house. For that you need to be an honest person. And when you are honest and you're holding Midata Emet, you're a truthful person that says the truth, that is dealing with his emotion even when it hurts. Even when he experienced a horrific pain that he never experienced before, he is dealing with it as much as he can. He is trying to take another spoon of that cake, even if it's not tasty and not delicious at all. Because it's the truth. And he feels that the Creator is the God of truth. And he's seeking the truth with all of his power. And he will not back off from the truth no matter how much it's going to humiliate him. The result will be that he will become the most humble person in the world. Moses, that man of truth, the one that was able to bring down the Torah and to reveal the truth of the Creator and His wisdom and His holy will to the world in the first time. He was the most humble person and he was holding himself worse than all of the most evil people of his generation. People that were sleeping with donkeys. People that were going and molesting the world and destroying the world. Black magicians, awful people. He held himself to be worse than all of them. How can it be? Moses, you look at yourself. Look at you. You're holy. You're pure. You're righteous. You're a genius. You know so much. Hashem is talking to you face to face, mouth to mouth. Whenever you call Hashem, Hashem is coming. You're a holy man. What are you talking about? To think to yourself that you're disgusting, that you're so filthy. How did you in the world came to that understanding? A simple explanation of a straight, wise person. When you are humble, you recognize the truth. Moses, he saw that Hashem is closer to him more than to anyone else, with no doubt. He didn't have the slightest <coughs> doubt about that. He saw, Hashem is carrying me like a mother carries her child, with no doubt. Everyone else, they have rabbis. Everyone else, they have teachers. Everyone else, they have parents. Only me on the ground, filthy. And only Hashem is washing me and purifying me and taking care of me and taking me. And the wonders that I saw, no one else ever seen in his life. Why? Because they have parents, so they cannot see Hashem. They have money, so they cannot see Hashem. They have children, so they cannot see Hashem. Only me that I'm broken with nothing in my hands. I can always see Hashem. Moses realized that the reason why Hashem took Am Israel out of Egypt on his own, why Hashem is saying to us, I took Am Israel out of Egypt, me and not an angel. Me and not the angels. 
The reason for that was because the dead place, Egypt, was <coughs> so impure, so contaminated, that even the most holiest angel in the world, in heaven above, if he would find himself over there in Egypt, for one moment he would be destroyed. Even though that he would be the greatest angel of them all, made out of pure fire, he himself, if he would go down to that dark and awful and impure place of Egypt, he would be contaminated and damaged over there. Only Hashem, that He is completely above the creation, does not have no connection and attachment to the physical world of creation in no aspect and in no way. Only He Himself could have go into that low place of Egypt and to redeem Am Israel, to take out his nation out of the darkness of Egypt. When Moses is seeing that the Creator is taking care of him, he is realizing a simple thing. I'm in the aspect of that most low place in the world, and there is no one else in the world that can help me except of Hashem Himself. There is no righteous man that can fix me. There is no Torah that can be given to me that will straighten my mind. I'm such a criminal. I'm so crazy. I'm so lost. I'm the worst of the worst of the worst. And Hashem, He <coughs> has an unconditional love. And He loves all of His creation. And He realized that with me, there's no other choice. So He came down to me. And whenever I call Him, He's answering. Because He knows I'm going to lose my mind if He won't answer me. Because I know myself. I'm losing my mind when Hashem is not answering me. That's a humble person's straight mind set. He is thinking with his mind and not with his arrogant. He is realized all the time that in every moment of his life, the Creator is revealing his unconditional love to him. And the Creator is taking care of each and every one of us like that he took care of his children in the desert for 40 years. If you can explain to me the wonders and the miracles that took place in your life, that today you find yourself that you ate and that you are well dressed and you have a place to sleep and you're able to eat and to talk and to communicate after all the trauma, after all the pain, after all the destructions that you went through in your lifetime, in your short lifetime, all the insultings, and all the disappointments and all the accidents that took place in your life. And you're still here. And you're still serving. And you're still working. How in the world did it happen if not <coughs> by that amazing, amazing mercy of our merciful Father that took you hand in hand and walked you out of that car, took you out of that party, took you out of that house, took you out of that bad habit, took you out of your fears and your pressure. I had a friend, I have a friend, he told me a story a few years ago, I said it already once or twice in my classes, he went to Vegas with his friends and he snored mountains of cocaine in 48 hours. You cannot imagine how that poor guy destroyed his mind. He came to a certain moment that he lost his mind completely. He fell on the ground and he went completely crazy and they took him to the room and he was not able to communicate and to talk anything with no one for 72 hours. His friends, they thought he lost it. Everyone thought he lost it. When, while he was in that crazy mindset, he was totally stoned, he was high, he was somewhere else, he was in a dark place and he was so lunatic that he couldn't grab his thoughts. Suddenly he realized that what that he did was wrong. That he must fix himself. That thought just hit him while he was completely lost. 
suddenly he realized that he must take responsibility on his life. Where that thought came from, no one knows. That person never ever took responsibility on his life. He was never a serious person. He was always going and doing whatever he likes. He was always stealing. He was always partying. He was always lying. He never had that inner conscience to stop. But when that thought hit him from within and he said to himself, you must do that, in one moment, all of that effect of the drug just disappeared <coughs> from his mind. When he decided to take responsibility, suddenly he was clear in his mind, perfectly sane and sober. And he changed his life from one side to the next. Only because of that power of commitment. Because he took the responsibility on himself. And the Creator made a wonder with him. To take away all of that poison drug from his brain. And to heal him. And to give him another chance to life. And we have a chance. And our chance is to come back to be normal. To be sane. To stop being our own enemies. To stop chasing and blaming ourselves on failures that were above our head. On the general darkness that is surrounding us. How can you blame yourself on the exile? How in the world can you blame yourself on the fact that now it's night time? How can you blame yourself? Are you moving the stars? Are you changing the governments and you decreeing all those decrees in the world? Are you moving nations from one state to the next? Are you have the power? Do you have any power in your life to affect and to change things outside? How many times you try to talk to someone and you sat with him for hours and hours? For thousands of hours to convince him and to help him to recover and to get stronger and to find hope. And he, in a minute, can make a U-turn and disappear from your eyes. Why? Because he is not under your power, under your jurisdiction, under your ability to choose decisions for him. You have only yourself to work on. And you need to work on what the, the Creator is putting in front of your eyes. If He is showing you in the patterns of your life that you're coming again and again over and over to the same places, you must take responsibility, full responsibility, with 100% of your power to work on those things. And what about all the rest? Put it aside. Someone else will take that package and will take care of it for you. You don't need to work on too many things in one time if you're not able. You should be aware to your power, to your ability, to your strength. And you should carve your way to the truth, to be an honest person. If you find yourself that you're afraid and scared from society, you need to work on that. If you feel that you're not able to communicate and to share your emotions and your feelings, you must work on that. If you find yourself that you're scared of your parents, you must work on that. If you find yourself that you have lust for women, that you have bad, bad thoughts, that you're attracted to foreign things and it makes you crazy, you must work on that. And all the rest can wait. You need to find the main issues and problems that are destroying your life and fix those. If the Creator will want to shine and illuminate another part of your life that you'll deal with, don't worry. He knows His ways. He knows exactly how to bring another fruit to your plate that you'll deal with. Rabbi Nachman of Westlef said, how the person will know that he has a desire, like ta'avat achila. How you say ta'avat achila? <coughs> Lust for food. What? Lust for food? Lust for food. How will you know? Rabbi Nachman said, when you think in your mind, oh, I want something that is over there, far away from you on the table. You see that nice salad over there, the green, the red, the, the looks like whatever. 
Oh, I, I want that. If you find yourself not looking in your area and you find yourself looking over there, you should know that you have lust for food. In all of our life it's like that. If instead of taking care of your emotional issues, the most bothering thing that is destroying your feelings, that destroys your mind, you choose to deal with other things, it's your lusts and your desires, bad desires that are pulling you to run away from the real obligation of your life, from the real responsibility of your life, and to make fixings on other people's plates on different houses, in different places, in different floors, different levels, they are not yours. Before you go and learn Kabbalah, before you become Kabbalistic, before you go and do six hours in Bodhidut or six thousand hours in Bodhidut, first of all, be aware to who you are. Go and try to talk to yourself, an honest conversation, and ask yourself, why are you so humiliated? Why are you so broken? Why are you so scared? What's going on? Call yourself in your own name and have a simple conversation with yourself. Okay, so answer, I've been hurt. And then say to yourself, okay, so what if you've been hurt? Let's see how we deal with that. <coughs> so you've been hurt. I understand. I've been hurt as well. So is it a good enough reason for me to go and hurt other people because of my pain? No, so I want to take responsibility. Okay, but where do I start? Where my problem starts? Make one step at a time. And if it's hard for you to think, and if it's hard for you to pray, write it down. Buy a blank notebook and write and start filling pages on pages of your thoughts. If you need to do something for that, so do something. If you need to go to a quiet place, go to a quiet place. If you need to play some music, play some music. If you need to go and ask someone if he can help you, go and ask for help. But go and deal with your true self and find it. Find who you are. Because you know, I'll tell you a small tiny secret. The Creator, He is the one that created you. Not only the world. He decided and designed and thought <coughs> exactly on every particle of your creation. What will be the color of your hair? What will be the shape of your brows, eyebrows? What will be the style that you will like to wear? Who will be your friends? What community you will belong to? In which house? And why in that age you moved to that house, in that area, different neighborhood? And why your parents, they have that weird accent? And why they never had friends? All those details are details that have been set by the Creator. The Creator Himself, He thought before of time, before of creation, and He designed the creation till <coughs> the last part of it. And He calculated and estimated all the details. And He came to the right conclusion that the best way for his beloved child to come down to accomplish his mission is in that shape, in that mindset, in that area, with those parents, in that neighborhood, with those people around him, with those negative thoughts inside of him, with those challenges, because they will straight him up slowly, slowly to recognize the real mission of his life of your life, even if you're born not to a Jewish family, even if you're born to a family that is not keeping Shabbat and not eating kosher, even if you're born as a child of the greatest Rebbe and you fell off the path, or even if you are still the child of that greatest Rebbe, but you hate your life and you can't stand your father and his students and you don't understand what the hell are you doing here. You have a mission in life. And your mission under heaven, under the Creator, will always be to seek for the truth. Not the truth that other people tell you that it's the truth. The truth that you recognize as the truth. If you found some truth and in the end of your journey running and chasing after the truth, you found yourself that you left your wife crying alone in the house, Something is wrong with that truth. Because it's not right to leave a person that is an equal partner with you in life broken, 
to pieces, sad and depressed in the house. Something is wrong with my mission. I need to straighten up myself. You need to check what was wrong. What was distracting you and pulling you out from the path of truth? Because when the truth is shining, when the light of truth is illuminating like in Noah's Ark, like we said before, that the truth is illuminating and shining the path for every person, no matter where he is, no matter where he at, no matter which dark and low level he is at, the truth will open gates for you to climb back to the light. Which truth? The Divine Truth, the Zohar Kadosh Truth, the Ba'la Sulam Truth, the Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, or Ba'la Tanya's Truth? No, the honest truth. To say I'm a coward, to say I'm so crazy, I lost my mind, I don't know what the real truth is. I'm a liar, I'm a pathetic liar. I'm always making up excuses, I'm always justifying myself, I will always try to blame other people for my failures, I never deal with my responsibility, I always try to blame someone else on my mistakes. That truth, when you will deal with that humbling truth, you'll become humble. Humble does not mean sad. Humble is the person that is a vessel. Now you became a vessel to contain light, spiritual light, light of courage, light of holiness and purity, light of life. You're going to be a live person. You will be able to discuss and to talk and to open up and to share your life journey with others. Even if it will be hard in the beginning, you will be able to talk. You will be able to be honest and to share your feelings, suddenly you won't be alone. Suddenly you're going to recognize that there are more people in your condition, in the same place, that are suffering from the same spiritual diseases and emotional sicknesses. And you will feel belong. And you're going to like them. And you're going to find friends. And you're going to find your real community. And even if it's going to be just baby steps, if you're going to keep on being honest, you're going to find more to it and more to it. And the path of truth will bring you from A to Z. Like the word truth starts with Aleph and finishes with Taf. Aleph and Taf are the first and last letters in the holy language of ancient Hebrew. And you, by following the beginning of all beginnings, saying to yourself, why am I eating that kind of food when I feel that it is destroying my digestive system? Why am I going with those friends to those places when I always feel that something wrong is going on over them? Why am I answering that person's phone calls over and over when I don't like him? When I don't want to be his friend? When I don't want to work with him? When I don't want to make business with him? Why am I justifying myself? Why am I not taking responsibility? Those are the first steps. This is the letter Aleph from the word truth. This is the beginning of truth. And when you're connecting yourself to that Aleph, you already connected yourself to al Olam, to God, to the master of the universe. Because He's the God of truth. And when you chose the truth, the truth will uplift you to the next step from Aleph to Bet and from Bet to Gimel. And you're going to climb and you're going to achieve and you're going to develop. And you don't need people to like you and to accept you and to confirm that you are righteous and to sign for you that you are pure. I tell you, don't count on no one. No one. Don't count on me. Go with yourself after my class to a quiet place and ask yourself, is it true? What was I feeling about his speech, about his words? Were those words words of truth that I recognized? Or maybe he was brainwashing me. Maybe I've been brainwashed for weeks, for months, for years. What's going on? 
Is he part of the system? Am I slave of the system? Am I part of this method, of that movement, tshuva, religion, religious, and I'm an orthodox, am I Haredi? What's going on? Ask those questions. Ask yourself, who am I? What is my role? What is my mission? Am I an animal in the herd? Are we going somewhere? Or do I? Or am I? What is my mission? What is my potential? If you're a violin player, if you're a fantastic dancer, if you're an awesome athlete, if you have the power of memory that no one else can describe, if you have a way with people, you know how to buy, how to sell, you think that those gifts have been given to you by the Creator for no reason? If you're good with numbers, if you're good with dates, if you have a photography memory, if you have qualities, if you have talents, if you have desires, you love to hear black music, you love to hear jazz. I don't know what does it mean, but for you it means something or else you wouldn't listen, you wouldn't follow that beat. You wouldn't connect yourself to those people. Why you like that actor and not that one? Why you like that community and not that one? Because that is you. Because sparks of spirit that belongs to you are out there in the world and you feel connection to your sparks. And if you will be honest to ask yourself, Am I doing it for honor or am I doing it because I really feel connected? Am I doing it for pleasuring my lusts and my desires or that I really feel spiritual satisfaction, joy while I'm doing it? What is pulling me? If you will connect yourself to the lowest level of truth, just deal with your reality you will become higher than the highest angels of them all. Because the Creator will redeem you from Egypt, Him and not an angel. Am Israel survived in Egypt and the Creator took them out in the right moment. You will survive this dark hour of our generation. You will make it through to the great redemption and complete salvation. Something so great that never even been described before. We cannot understand what it's all about. Resurrection of the dead will take place. Millions of souls will come back. Millions of millions, hundreds of millions of souls that are the lost <coughs> tribes of Israel will come back to our Jewish nation and will be one together. We're talking about huge and crazy movements in the world. All the children of Abram, all the children of Moses, all the children that went out from zone of Kedusha, out from the borders of holiness and today disappeared in complete dark of exile are all in the future to come back until there will be no one left behind. Can you understand the greatness of that moment? That there will be peace among all people and all animals. That all of the animals, all the birds, <coughs> all the fish in the sea, everyone will be friends with each other. That there will be no more death. No more sicknesses, no more weaknesses, no more lies, no more evil inclination, no more fights with the neighbors, no more wars between nations, no more rapes, and no more violence, and no more... And all, all, all the darkness will melt and disappear from the world. And it's in front of our eyes. Even if we cannot see one inch ahead, it doesn't mean that it's not here. It's here, just that the Creator wants to give that amazing gift to a group of honest people, of people that never left faith, faith in human beings, faith in love, hope in good, people that were kind, <coughs> people that worked on themselves, people that worked to be generous, People that try to be the best that they can be. 
To those people, the Creator will reveal His loving face in a way that He never revealed even to our ancestors. What that we are about to see and experience in our life is much, much greater than the redemption that took place 3,000 years ago when our nation went out of Egypt. That was nothing compared to the third redemption. Nothing compared to that. We went out of Egypt from the land of our enemies and we found thousands on thousands of enemies ahead of us. Enemies that wanted to kill us, that wanted to violate us, that wanted to destroy us. In every generation it just got worse and worse. That was not a redemption at all compared to the redemption that is about to come. And it will come. It depends in us. It depends in our understanding that <coughs> the Creator it's a breath of a hair, it's a moment of, of, of it's, it's an act of one moment to bring the redemption. It's a decision for Him to make. When He said there's going to be light, suddenly there was light. When He will decide to bring the redemption, it will take place with no time. Suddenly we will all be redeemed already. You won't remember what took place one hour ago, one moment ago. You won't have your issues anymore. You're going to be so happy. You're going to be so healthy. You're going to grow so much. Your awareness and your understanding will bloom, will rise to dimensions that you were not aware of them at all before. And it's all in the hands of heaven. And it's in our hands to connect ourselves to that simple faith, to that simple understanding that it's all in the hands of heaven. It's not in the hand of those righteous ones. It's not in the hands of the wealthy ones. It's not in the hands of all the wise guys. They think that they have moves in the world. No one can control life and death except of the Creator Himself. And He's the one that accepts and listens to all the prayers. He's the one that lives with you inside your heart. He's the one that knows your inclination. He's the one that knows your inner secrets. He's the one that was with you in the darkest hours. He's the one that loves you in unconditional love. He's the one that is willing to redeem us all and the wide world with us. We need to trust our inner voice and to go with full power, in full speed, toward a complete <coughs> redemption and salvation to the wide world, and not only to ourselves as individuals. The way to achieve that is just, like we said, by being honest with our lackings, to confront our fears, to deal with them, and not to be scared and run away and being chased by them. To fight with our fears, to deal with all of our negative thoughts, to ask ourselves, why am I so afraid? Why am I so humiliated? Why do I feel so bad with myself? And even if you find an answer, go deeper, search deeper. Let's say that the first answer that you received was not answering your question. you still lost, you're still terrified. You have reasons to be scared. You have reasons to be humiliated because I sinned, because I messed up, because I failed, because look at him, how strong and powerful he is, because they can affect my life. I don't know what you're going to think. Go deeper. Ask another question. Can they really affect my life? Was my intention really so bad when I committed that horrific sin that I cannot be forgiven for good? Is there no place to give another chance for a person like me? Is there <coughs> no place for tshuva for a person like me? Hashem really rejected me completely, so why am I alive? Why I am thinking on ways how to reconnect to myself, to Him, if He already turned His back on me completely, like I just thought to myself. It means that He never did. And I still have hope. And Hashem can protect me. Even if my faith is weak, 
So I'm going to work on my faith. Walk hand in hand with yourself. Come back to be your own best friend again. Like you were a child, like when you were innocent. Come back to your true self, be innocent again. And try to rebuild the destructions of your life, so to speak. Rebuild your life, redesign your future, follow your simple dreams, go and fulfill your holy desires, go and chase to find your own heart, what it belongs to you, go until you'll find it. Don't surrender and don't give up on your hopes and on your dreams. Not on the dream to get married even if you're 50, <coughs> not on the dream to have children even if you're 46, and not to give up on buying a house, and not to give up on having peace in your house, not to give up on making money, not to give up on being healthy if you're sick in bed and to not move your feet. Don't give up from prayers, because prayers are the tools that have been given to us by heaven to reveal godliness in this dark world, in this dark time. Godliness does not have borders, does not have amounts. This world is a vessel that when you humble yourself, this vessel can contain God Himself. The salvation of the world can be redeemed, can be revealed through you. You can save the world with your simplicity with your honest heart, <coughs> with your honest and simple will to take responsibility and to be a person of truth. And I promise everyone that will walk in that simple faith to see great results, impressive developments in his life. You won't walk in baby steps for long. Very fast you're going to start running. But for that we need to start. You need to start with Alphabet. You start in the beginning. The beginning is not to lie to ourselves anymore. It's to deal with our fears. It's to be aware to who we are and to work on ourselves. Thank you very much. May Hashem answer all of our prayers and all of our holy desires for no time. Amen. Can you hear some? Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.